What's up, y'all? It is your girl, Sarah from Sarah Saz here. We are doing a live today with Millie and Monica and Carnet Creations talking about how to clean items to resell. Items that you are getting donated or purchasing from a thrift store that need a little bit of extra TLC, how to do it. These ladies have some amazing tips and I'm super excited to learn a little bit more from them. If you are new to my channel and you like reseller content, I also do a lot of data analytics. I have two analytical dashboards that I sell on Etsy. I'm doing, I'm currently doing a 50% off sale on those because we're home now. No better time than to look at your data and figure out what is working for you to improve your business while you're home and we cannot be outsourcing. So the code for that is or for the code for that for 50% off is spring. The links to purchase are down below. Make sure to subscribe if you like content like this. Join us on the live chat if you are watching this live and ask all the questions that you have cleaning or otherwise. These women are a wealth of knowledge. If you are watching this in the recording, make sure to leave comments down below and I will make sure that they get answered answered so without further ado let's bring them on this is carrie and monica from millie and monica carrie is i have a little spiel here so i don't forget all the talking points um first let's say hi to the people joining liz hey liz and michelle and ashley um what's up mish market for the life of me i cannot think of her first name now Mish market. Okay. I know I was on my channel and like all of the different names. Hi, Alicia. What's up? Um, thank you, everybody. And Tori, thanks guys for joining us. Ask these ladies all the questions that you have. I have some from Instagram. Lots of talking points too. I have no we're gonna fill an hour easily and probably still not hit all of the things that you guys can share with us. So Carrie is from um Carnet Cre Creative. I said creations. I'm sorry about that. Carinette Creative. She has over a decade of reselling experience and is a hopeless romantic when it comes to giving old and used things new life, which I love about this. We were talking before the chat and I was like, eh, I just get rid of it. And she finds joy in, oh, where did she go? We lost her. Well, hopefully she comes back. <laughs> well, introduce Monica. This is Monica. She has been reselling for three and a half years. There she is. That's live. There she is. So Monica, well, introduce Monica really quick. That's live. People are coming and going. Um, Monica has been reselling for three and a half years. She has an amazing YouTube and Instagram. So definitely the link for that is down below. Follow her on both of those. She has lots of really good content about reselling. She likes selling vintage and modern clothes. So I'm going to ask you, Monica, tell us a little bit about your name, Millie and Monica, how you came up with it. Who is Millie? And yes. oh, what? Um, <laughs> and how you got into reselling? Yeah, so I'll start with my name, Millie and Monica. So if you've been following me since the beginning, I was actually Thrifty Little Fox on Poshmark. That's where I got started, and that name goes way back. However, uh, what I noticed is that people were getting a little confused with uh, the Fox part and confusing my name with other people on Instagram. And so I really wanted uh, to connect my name with my brand because I feel like you know people can connect people and faces really well. And I was the face of my brand, so I really wanted to connect my name and I was having a hard time of course coming up with a name that wasn't already taken uh, and at the time when I came up with Millie and Monica I was using my mannequin or my dress form uh, to you know display oh so oh there we go so anyway uh, I decided to go ahead and name my my mannequin and I named her Millie. So Millie and oh Monica. Oh my God, I love this so yes. much. And so, you know, I loved the double M's and there that's how we, we got the name uh, Millie and Monica. But as far as when did I begin? I actually lived in Seattle for three years and uh, you know, that's not where I'm from, but that's where my husband and I lived for three years and we enjoyed it so much. And that's where I really dove into vintage clothing because I actually had access to it where I'm from a small town in South Dakota. I really didn't have access to that much vintage prior. Uh, and I just fell in love with not only finding it, but also wearing it. I was a teaching elementary school and I 
had this extensive collection of vintage. Once I found out I'd be moving back to the Midwest, where I currently live now in Minnesota, I decided that it was time to start letting go of some of those pieces I knew I wasn't going to wear in 30 below uh, degree weather. So I started selling it on Poshmark and here we are. So there you go. Yeah. And I find I was actually just looking at my data to do my what sold video for next week. Um, and I love selling vintage as well. And I think mm -hmm. Carrie, you like vintage as well. And my when I look at data by state, a lot of my sales are in like Oregon and Seattle because mm -hmm. of vintage. Um, so cool story. Thank you so much um, for sharing that with us. And let me check in with. So Alicia is asking. If there's any tips not known or really discussed for new resellers, and I think she's talking about cleaning tips, you're going to learn all the cleaning tips here. But if you had a more specific question, leave that in the comment and I'll make sure to ask them. Leslie has joined us. Um, Irish Lux Poshmark has, says her mannequin's name is Betsy. I need a name mine. I don't yeah. care. Yours, is yours named? Do you have a mannequin name? I don't. I, I actually was thinking that today when I have mine behind me, but I, I usually am always like, especially when my retail days, like I would physically have to name the mannequins because, you know, you get the jumpsuits on. You're like, come on, Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> on. You can <laughs> have, like the one person, the arms are falling off. So I guess I, I do need to name it, but I feel like there's a little bit of pressure. I just have one and only right now. So I know me too. All right. So let me reintroduce you since you are back on. I'm actually going to make a note that I need to name my mannequin. <laughs> Instagram story. First on the docket tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could do like a story tomorrow on Instagram and people can help me. Um, Carrie, let's get back to Carrie. So Carrie has over a decade of reselling experience. Um, she loves giving old things new life. She has, uh, she started selling at church rummage events, which I've heard are amazing. I've actually never been to one. Um, when I was a child, but not like as a reseller. She has spent the last five years as the right-hand woman to a successful local vintage entrepreneur. So she definitely knows her vintage. All of her free time in the last three years has been solely devoted to building her own business. And she is excited to officially commit to a full-time entrepreneur as of April. That is amazing. Congrats on that. You can find her on Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, Instagram, and YouTube, YouTube too, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. I just started YouTube last week. Yeah, yeah. Yes, YouTube is a beast. Um, so welcome. Tell us a little bit. And I do want to say that these ladies links are all down below. Um, so anything that we talk about, they have links to all of their stuff as well. Um, so tell us a little bit how you came up with your name and how you got into reselling. Yeah, um, I didn't realize and it was something that always like dawns on me that I'm, I'm 22 years old, but half of my life has been um, reselling. And I always grew up that like, I was thrifting, I was always going to yard sales, my mom like always said, like, you know, we would always make stuff that's super unique and make our own costumes. And I would always be designing my dolls clothes and everything. And I started selling my clothes when I was 11. And it was just like a once a year sale. And I'd be but I'd be cleaning everything, I'd be pricing everything, I'd be like dressing it, I'd be folding it so it's perfect presented. And I mean, those skills are kind of crazy that they're all coming back now. Um, and yeah. I always had been interested in fashion. Um, I started telling people in sixth grade that I was gonna go to Parsons and I was gonna be a fashion designer. And I had my whole track planned out for me. Um, and I, I did that, I, I did, and I love everything I do, but I actually started interning for the business that I spent about five years with. Um, and I noticed that, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to make all these clothes and I went to Parsons with the full- um, Oh, you did go to Parsons? Yeah, to oh, make all these yeah. clothes, but then I, like there is more clothing in the world than we could ever know to do with. and there's so many beautiful things that already need a home, you know, and I'm always like, they take on a new personality, like, especially in the vintage world, like mm -hmm. these pieces, I get to work with these clients, they have a story, they have a person they're attached to, it was someone's wedding gown in 1942, and her name was Betty, and her granddaughter Cheryl's coming in to bring it to her, so it's really kind of beautiful, and then the person that comes in that's going to buy this dress from me wants to know that story Definitely. and wants to, you know, put it with a jean jacket and kind of style it and do sneakers with it. And I do you, love, do yeah. you ever, do you ever include the stories in your Poshmarks? This is not a question that was on the agenda, but do you ever include, like, if you know the story of your pieces, include it like in your um, sales? I, 
I haven't done it on a personal, but for the other businesses that I've worked for, I do always kind of incorporate that. And especially on a brick and mortar retail level, um, I always had those conversations with clients. Um, but I definitely should include the story. I, I didn't even think of that. Usually I'm like short and sweet and keep all my terms kind of bullet pointed in my Poshmark, but I love that idea of kind of including a story. Yeah, it just, I didn't mean to cut you off. It just- No, no, I love it. Oh, um, I don't know if you follow Breezy Von Breezy. Um, I've seen that because she does a lot of vintage and I know that yeah. she's done that before. So if you know the story, I thought it was a cool, I don't yeah. usually yeah. know that no, I'll have to incorporate that. Yeah, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Keep going. No, you're good. <laughs> I'll snowball right back in. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, so I love connecting people with a piece that's always meant for them. You know, it takes on a new life. And um, so I started working for this business and then I started becoming a buyer. So when I was at school in New York, I would be going to different stores and different shows and I would be sourcing at different trade shows um, and from different dealers. And then um, when I came home, I would be sourcing at auctions and estate sales. And um, then I uh, lost the thought there. But um, <laughs> then sure, I bro, is what I'm getting is you are like a boss. I mean, <laughs> you know all the things. Like, if you guys have questions, go ask her. Yeah, I mean, start firing them at me. But um, yeah, yeah I, mean, I guess the moral of the story is that I was born and bred for this. You know, I love what I do. I love connecting pe with people. Um, but as I started to get more and more immersed in the business that I was working for, I started to lose like what my passions were. And I kind of wanted to just kind of scale back and see what at the very least I wanted to do. Um, so I became a antique and vintage dealer for about two years. And I sold to stores and uh, di additional dealers all through New York and Philadelphia. Um, and then I had a lot of pieces like I would buy out entire auction lots of like 200 pieces and I would be able to sell 30, 60, 90 of those pieces, but I would be left with these other pieces that were great. They just were a little too new or they weren't right or they weren't right for the store. So I turned to Poshmark and taught myself the app. I mean, I've used eBay, Etsy, Ruby Lane, all those fun things, but Poshmark for me is like a game changer. And I mean, mm -hmm. there is nothing that is that user friendly and that positive and the best customer service. Um, for me, in my opinion and my experience. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I started selling there in 2017 and then I am going officially full-time as of today. So um, you probably have like a ton of connections, right? From doing all of your previous work for sourcing. Yeah. Like you're probably yeah. breaking out right now about where you're gonna get sourcing. <laughs> No, um, and that's the good part. I mean, I had, I had a, I mean, in addition to my inventory, I had a private collection over like two thousand pieces that I had just accumulated. I mean, I started collecting vintage when I was six, so I started inheriting things too from my family members. I mean, I have certain people and certain cousins that are in the antique and vintage business, so they'd be like, "I don't want this. Do you want that instead?" And we would start to trade things along. So I have everything from a, a ridiculous copper, like flatware and pots and pans collection to 1960s costume jewelry that has like cuckoo clocks. So I am so glad you came on this show. This, <laughs> like we're not even getting into cleaning yet, which we need to get to, but like I, I can talk to you about all of your experience previous. So we may have to have you on again. Um, everyone is saying congrats to um, going full time. Thank you. And they Thank you they love your story. They can relate to what you said about losing yourself a bit and repairing that part of life. Um, Mish Market says Carrie is the queen of low key vintage sources. Whoa, 2,000 pieces. Bravo, says Liz. My um, dad okay. would not say whoa. <laughs> he would not say bravo. <laughs> well, we may have to have you guys back on for vintage because I love vintage and it seems like you both know a thing or two about that as well. But today we are talking about cleaning. So, yes. I do want to get into that a bit. Um, so let's start with outsourcing um, and you get estate sales, thrift stores. I mean, and you, both, you both do a lot of vintage, so it obviously is used. Um, do you wash everything? And I'm just going, that's, we're going to start very basic, just going, um, we'll start with you, Monica, and then to Carrie. Do you wash everything? And if you don't, how do you decide what to wash and what not to? I don't wash everything. Uh, mostly because I do like more, I'm more of a quantity based seller and I literally don't have the time to wash everything. And that's where the steamer comes in. I'm sure 
Um, a lot of people know about steamers, have heard about steamers, and I definitely utilize the steamer just so I can get through um, stuff quickly. And I mean, it, it truly depends on the piece. Uh, if it needs to be washed, I mean, obviously you can tell maybe if it's, you know, more of a basic uh, cotton piece that can easily be thrown in the washing machine than I do. Denim is definitely easier to wash than other pieces. So de I probably wash more denim than anything else. Um, but no, I, I don't wash everything. I definitely use a steamer. To do Okay. And what about you, Carrie? Yeah. I mean, a steamer is honestly the most effective way to clean something. My utility bill would also be out of the works with yeah. all of that washing. But yeah. honestly, a lot of things, especially in the antique and vintage world are not supposed to be washed, um, which I'll get a little bit more into hand washing. And I know Monica has a lot of experience with that too um, later on, but steaming is obviously the number one most effective way. You don't have to have like a $300 Jiffy steamer, although they are amazing. Um, also be careful, they're very hot. And, but there's handheld steamers. I had one that like I had from Macy's and it lasted like a couple years. Every once in a while you have to like reset the button and it's time consuming, but. Now I know Carrie, you sent me over some of your favorite products that are in the yeah. description down below. Monica, do you have in like your link to your on it? You have like an Amazon mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, about yeah. everything that we're talking about, these ladies, their links, um, are in the description down below and mm -hmm. i think if you have the amazon influencer they get a little bit of a kickback if you yeah it's not anything huge but it is helpful especially in these times so click on those yeah. and out as well um everyone is saying steamers are amazing so yep. <laughs> that's a win all around mm -hmm. yes okay yeah. so now let's talk and you guys said and you have i saw in your stories to carry um all of the things that you have ready to show us let's get into your cleaning toolbox um and we can just kind of have a casual conversation you guys might have same some of the same things in your um cleaning toolbox so monica why don't you start and you can show us you know we'll start with one and we'll see <laughs> carrie also uses it and kind of just go through your guys's toolbox and as things come up we can um go through there you know, probably the, I'm going to choose my favorite because I've been using this probably the longest. I actually really love selling shoes just in general. Like I really like selling shoes and I don't know what I would do without this. I, there might be a bit of a glare, but this is 100% acetone. Um, and I've been using this for like three years, the same bottle. So basically the acetone and these like little, you know, pads here, We'll take off like the. Um, oh, you came prepared, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually markered the bottom of these shoes because I haven't used them. But yeah. I wanted, like, I literally wanted to show you because people ask all the time, like, how do you get the writing off of shoes? Yeah. And the acid, the hundred percent acetone is like my go-to. So are it's those probably kind of Sorrells? Yeah, <laughs> they're I not in good them. condition. <laughs> I have never seen that style. Oh. Yeah, they're they're weird. The actual the the mate to this one is pretty bad, uh, mm -hmm. and I haven't done anything with them. But yeah, the rubber acetone takes it off perfectly, and you know we can talk about leather bottom shoes later. But this is my favorite, and uh, yeah, Carrie. You? Yes. I was like, please don't do that on your calfskin leather soles. That is a no go. Yeah, but yes. right. And we can talk about what you guys do on leather as well. I'm going to check in um, with the chat really quick. And there's a couple of people saying that they use a wet rag in the dryer, which is my go to because I am, I don't want to say lazy, I'm going to say efficient. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. like, but you have to be careful because not everything can go in the dryer. So I've learned that lesson. And my actually, my like, crazy like best like kind of change the subject but i love these wool dryer balls oh, um God. and that works for me really well i'll put like a really basic essential oil in there so either like lavender or eucalyptus or peppermint something that's not offensive to people and just like a couple drops and you can do it on the air dry or the air fluff mode so there's no heat going on the item um, but that just kind of gets some air through it and that's also a good way if you don't if you have a wool dryer ball you want to get those or a wet rag can also work but there's no like moisture in the wool so that kind of works for like my silk items and uh, those are a little bit more delicate. 
yeah, you can get the wrinkles out if you do a little bit of heat, but um, generally I just suggest a, uh, a steamer for wrinkles. Yeah, because I have those and I just don't know what to do with them. Oh, <laughs> like, I just told me right in there, yeah. Well, then I put things in there. I actually, so a friend of mine told me to get them like personally. Like she was like, you should be hang drying your clothes and then put them in with a wool dryer. Um, and I did it and I was like, I don't know what this is doing. <laughs> Sometimes you notice it. I mean, I had like, I live with my dad and he loves like the dryer sheets and the scented dryer sheets. And I'm like, we're just ending up in the landfill. So it's a great like eco alternative if you want some kind of like extra boost of scent. Um, it also helps reduce static. And I think there's another use with it. I'm like, well, see, and I don't wear silk, so that's probably yeah. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, those are great. Those are great options. But yeah, I mean, generally, mm -hmm. I say first steamer, then you can go and graduate to doing like an air fluff or a little bit of heat with the dryer balls. Um, you don't have to put an essential oil on there. Um, I do for my personal clothes. I try to just do like one or two drops if I'm doing something for work. Um, but that's definitely like my like holy grail for that. Um, and I do, so I'm going to tell you all the efficient ways <laughs> because so I, and I used to have to do this to a certain extent, but I hang everything up when I get home right away to let it air out. So then, cause I, I am like a part-time, part-time seller, um, that I don't have a ton of time. And so it really limits how much I have to steam as well. All right, let's keep going, Monica. What else you got? Uh, the next one is probably most of you know about this one, the Tide to Go Stick is seriously a lifesaver on those stains and spots that you're just like not quite sure about. So, you know, if you haven't tried these yet, these have saved me so much work and, you know, unnecessarily like washing something that might be uh, maybe more delicate. Mm -hmm. I recently uh, have used these on just regular your polyester blouses that have like maybe a little spot just to see if it was surfaced or not set in and they work really well. Yeah. Okay. So Ashley's asking and it's my exact same question is, can you use it on all fabrics or is there like, do you have to? I've um, used it on a lot of fabrics. I think so you've ever had an issue. If you have ever had an gentle. issue, I'm going to say yes. What's that Carrie? I think it's the most gentle out of the pens. Okay. If you're going to use like, that's like the first tier. I think that's, it's probably like, if, I would just use a little bit and then kind of see, it's kind of like an experiment. You got to like do a little bit and then see what happens, leave yeah. it for a minute and rinse it out. Yeah. Um, don't take out the whole cap and go at it right away. But <laughs> there's also an OxyClean pen. I know there's a Clorox mm. pen, but there's a new OxyClean pen. And my sister is like a sneaker freak, but she knows like all the sneaker kids, they put that on their white sneakers. And that's like a little bit more like of a natural, I guess, alternative to doing the white like stamper on your sneaker too. Um, but that love OxyClean. In the yeah. Water. Oh, OxyClean, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Number three on the list, like, yeah, number one. OxyClean <laughs> is amazing. Um, yeah. So Ashley's asking, will it remove rust from canvas shoes? With I don't know. I've never used this on shoes. I've only used it on clothing. So there is a product called Rust Off. It comes in a brown bottle and it's liquid. I don't have it with me. But if you use it, wear gloves, but it will get rust off of any fabric. Um, and again, a little bit a long way and dab with some water. But that's a good alternative for directly for rust, too. OK, awesome. Um, also, the pen that comes in the dry L kit is great. I don't know what that is. Does that mean something? Yeah, yeah. Stay with us, Liz. Yeah, that's what. Uh, the I, Carrie, what's next on your tool kit? Um, I love. So I use a like sweater shaver. This is great, and I know Monica has the um, the other one that's like a long. Um, I have multiple <laughs> thing. And I have so many. Yeah, there's like a million of them. And I mean, I was always using like the old school razor on my cashmere sweaters, but that's a good one. And then obviously like go over with your lint roller, but there's a new product that I found that um, Sarah linked down below. I just dropped it conveniently, but it's this like eco lint roller. I love anything that's like a great alternative that I use daily, but can be reused. So the one side is like those, like there's the camera. Um, but it has this like textured side and then there's a brush so you kind of go along against the grain of this to the grain of the fabric and then it'll pull up anything and then when you're done you just brush it off here 
and then you have the little lint cloud. Yeah, I have a dog um, lint roller like that. It's amazing. That, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, that, one. that one, yes. Yeah. So this cool. one has the different like attachment pieces. So like, oh my God, you guys are on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This, this head is like for a coarser, heavier sweater. And then there's ones that are like, this one's really great for cashmere. Sorry, it's really bright. But then very similar to the one, Carrie, you just showed where you can just use this to remove the lint. So yeah, so you're not having to do, yeah, we have that for the dog and it, you like flip it around yeah. and it like goous one way or the other because our dog sheds ridiculous yeah. amounts. So the one that you have, Monica, mm -hmm. that one seems very, like because the ones that I've seen are like the little hand electric ones and then you don't have as much control. That one, it has different levels, like you could do chorus. Yeah, that's the ones I've seen. Yeah. So when would you use that and when would you use the one that you've been showing me? So... And then there's, I have one more too. Oh. This one is my new favorite. I okay. love this one. That's my This favorite. one's really great for, oh gosh. Um, I, I use them all for so many different reasons. Okay. So and this like one cool. specifically, I really like for leggings. So you know how on the, like the inner thigh of leggings, you get yeah. that peeling. Personally, I've, Oh, I've started using the this type really just for leggings and I've moved to, to these for like basically all my sweaters. So okay. uh, depending again, like I said, this one has the removable heads that are for different types of sweaters. And it, it comes with instructions. Kind of, <laughs> kind of. Uh, but anything that's like a coarser or a heavier knit, uh, maybe even a wool. And like opposite here. I know it's hard with the camera. Yeah, but then like the, like the cashmere, like definitely one of these that's like uh, a different type. I don't know how to explain them, but yeah, I guess I've only I've started using this only on leggings, and because I I found that these other ones just work so much better on sweaters. So do you have, like with the tie pen, you said do a little bit and let it dry. Like we're having a lot of people that said they're scared of shavers and they've ruined things. So what kind of tips do you have? Like just start slow, like how yeah. do you? Yeah. I see like that, yeah, there's a couple people. Cashmere is, you wanna be super delicate. I mean, that's like yeah. the same notion as shaving your legs. You don't wanna go at it and like gorge yourself. You wanna mm -hmm. kind of lightly brush it. And it's just like all the other techniques we said, like Sarah said with the Tide Pen, like you wanna go on a date with this thing. Like you wanna romance it, you wanna have the small talk and then you wanna like get into it. So you kind of have to like adopt the same philosophy to these clothes. Like mm -hmm. we're not gonna like act, be all like happy about being like punched with this lint roller. So yeah. that's always my thing, like just start light and then as you need it, get a little bit heavier. But it is such a bummer when stuff happens. Yeah. And it, it, at the end of the day, like, it is a risk that we take with pieces mm -hmm. that can get damaged. But that's also, like, I have to think of it as, like, the cost of learning. Um, mm -hmm. And then do better. Hopefully your cost of goods is low enough that yeah. while you lose out on what you could have sold it for, like, probably start with the item you got at the bins and not the item that you got at the consignment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think, like, also my personal, like, theory, too, is if you did pay up for something and it does have a little bit of pilling, like a cashmere sweater, if you're that nervous, like, just sell it as is. You know, it's better than potentially ruining it if you don't have the right tools. Like, I don't think I would ever take this one, for instance. Like, I don't know if you can see. It's – this one's a little bit – You, I wouldn't use this on cashmere, personally. So if this was the only tool I had, I, w I probably would just leave it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm in the camp of, I'm terrified. I'm So Jacob keeps saying that he's terrified. <laughs> and I'm in that camp too, that I list a lot of things and just say, this is what it is. If you, a dry cleaner could probably do this mm -hmm. or, you know, a shaver, like let it be on mm -hmm. them. And then yes, you probably, I probably lose out on a little bit. Um, yeah. But I'm also scared. Yeah, I think that was like my I think that was my like first note on this. Like when you start working with things, like take into consideration your cost of goods. If it's gonna sell with that flaw, like what do comps look like? Is it something that like mm -hmm. is worth your time putting into? Is it gonna cost is it gonna make it and ultimately is it going to make it that much more saleable if you repair it or if you spend that extra 15, 20 minutes or the extra 10 cents of your water bill? on this item, is it ultimately worth it? 
Um, and so you're, you're, speaking my, you're speaking my language there because I'm all about the numbers and I break it down to like a number. If I'm going to spend 15 minutes on that, that's one listing that I'm not getting. Am I going to make that much more on an item? And very rarely, at least for me, very rarely is doing those things worth it. But mm -hmm. I think there probably are a lot more times that I'm not doing it. I just don't like cleaning. <laughs> So, yeah. All right. What else? Let's hear what else is in your guys's toolbox. Sorry, Monica. Here, tell us. <laughs> is it your turn or is it mine? I don't know. All right. Oh, I'm like, let's go. I, mean, I think we've gotten out of. All right. <laughs> well, I know that Monica did a video on this. And if you guys haven't watched it, there's your plug there to go watch it after this. But oh, the doc yes, I know this one. Wonder Balsam. Yeah. I love this i mean i like so i have like my basic leather conditioner there we go this is nothing fancy if you want the link for it i you can dm me but it's just like a generic grocery store leather conditioner this is for pieces that like obviously it's a little bit more expensive so i'm going to use this on my pieces like the coach bags or my reese bags or anything that's a little bit more um intense on there but i also love um the ugg sheepskin kit i know that oh, I i've heard about this is it worth it yes yeah well, I, i've had this thing for years and i think like you can find these sometimes at goodwill you can find them on ebay but i know that eileen aka lunar chic she was asking about suede um and that's always a tricky one um again sometimes with it you really can't fix it like that's one of the one things like that and lambskin is like once it's scratched once it has an issue it's kind of like gone forever unless you want to dye it um, but yeah, they have the brush, which I know that Monica has this like one linked in her Amazon too, but this is just the brush side and this is like a, a stone, like kind of like a pumice stone material, mm -hmm. but generally you want to go with the grain of the suede. You don't want to do anything crazy with it. Don't go zigzagging or whatever. Um, and then if you wanted to, you can condition it in this one. They have the sheepskin, like a blind woman leading the blind here. Yeah, right. no, it's awkward on the computer for sure. Yeah, so this one's the sheepskin freshener, which if you have stinky feet, that's perfect. This so you perfect. had this because they're kind. Of, those UGG things are kind of pricey. I've looked they at are. it and I'm so cheap that I won't buy it. But you've had it for years. Yeah, and I say so again, a little, everything. A little bit goes a long way. Don't you don't have to start with a crazy amount, but um, those pieces, like they're tried and true. Obviously, they're not selling them if they're not working. So they um, they are they work really well, and I use a little bit a long way. And again, if it's not worth your time and it's not worth your money, don't sweat that. You know, just list as is, and someone's gonna buy it. I mean, I absolutely am someone that buys flood things. I don't know, everyone's in that boat, but. Again, if it has like a story, I, I like an extra scratch. It's a scratch that I don't have to make, so. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. That's how, I don't like buying new cars because I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be the first one to scratch this. It's going to happen. Definitely, definitely. Um, I will say I do, I mean, I don't do a whole lot. I, no surprise, but for suede, especially like Uggs and stuff, even just combing it can mm -hmm. like give it so much new light and that takes nothing. Um, yeah. And you can get like a suede comb for pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's like really the only thing you want to fuss with it. If it's anything more, I would just go to your local cobbler. I would go to your local leather worker. Um, you can send in a Google if you don't know who your, your guy is. Um, but he will or she will know what to do with um it a little bit more than like you can if it's like again like a pair of chanel suede boots or whatever um that's going to give you that profit margin that's going to make it worth that extra 20 or 30 dollars to refurbish it oh i hadn't thought about like i've thought about a dry cleaner for clothes but i hadn't thought about because they can do that for yeah yeah use your resources i mean if they need a new snap on a boot um or a new zipper on something um i even have like different enamel on um like Gucci shoes or Chanel shoes done on that too. They can, like my jeweler can replate those things. My jeweler replates my Gucci belt every couple of months. So it's something that like you, those resources you don't necessarily like think about, but at the end of the day, like they're a professional in their field. So if it's worth the time um, and you can support that small business on something that's gonna make you more money, ultimately it will be beneficial, you know, and you have that resource. And also they'll give you bulk discounts if you bring more at once. So well, then you don't have to be as scared to do it, either. especially like on a pair of like high end things. I would never touch them. <laughs> like 
yeah. I would never, unless it's something like simplistic. Um, we are having a couple of questions. So let's go to the chat really quick. And you guys are welcome to read the chat and cut me off as well. If you see something, I'm trying to get better about learning. Um, so Irish Lux says, I took sneakers and filled a glass of baking. A glass baking dish one fourth of the way with hot water mixed with oxyclean and just and let just the bottom soak which is smart i know someone had asked a lot about sneakers so we may get in to that um i've used dawn before on sneakers um ashley's asking how about cleaning a vintage duny leather purse yeah monica's the seasoned one on that i think you have, do you have a video on that one too well i did my leather you know video but honestly i to me, if it's leather, I still just, yeah. you know, this, I, I don't extend, I don't soak it. I know that some people there's like, you know, they have a soaking method. I think, um, thrifty Michelle on Instagram, I've seen her in the past. I think she even has a video on dunking her doonies, but I personally have never done that. So I don't, I don't know, Carrie, do you have any experience with the, the dunking method? I don't dunk anything yeah um that's just my personal preference mm -hmm. i mean unless it's like something that desperately needs to be stained but i know it works for some people but again for me that purse is gonna take like a good two three days to dry i don't have yeah. time for that um if it's something that like is like a passion project for me um i will do that but yeah i don't tend to put too much water on anything that's leather yeah. but another little guy is the mm -hmm. magic eraser these are what can you use that on i just found so we're selling our house and our um i have kids i don't know why i've never used that before it is amazing they are amazing okay yeah, well, so good. Good. i'm a bald man with the magic he is a magician so yep. yeah <laughs> can you use it on like leather and stuff yes i use these what? on leather i had actually some doonies a while ago and i did use this and i mean again circular motion Make sure it's plenty like damp, not super wet. Um, and yeah, Liz, it's it's literally magic. Yeah, um, I can like these on my floor, on my walls. Yeah. It blew my mind because I sell a lot of purses and I usually just close that they have like a mark on them because I'm too scared to do anything. Um, and I'm also cheap, but I have some of those and I just got a purse. So I'm going to try and clean that. Ashley agrees, game changer. Um, Monica, you were talking about the Doc Martens as well. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're going to buy one, at least from my personal experience, if I was to buy one thing I waited far too long to get was the Doc Martens stuff. Mm -hmm. I sell a lot of shoes and purses and it is so easy. And it yeah. is like, I mean, I have a picture on my Instagram too with, with one Doc Martin before and after, and they look like completely different shoes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Um, someone did say they already bought the Ugg Sheep suit. She yeah, I love that Eileen. That's awesome. I'm gonna have to get one. We're moving, so I'm not buying anything right now. I'm not buying things to move. But okay, what else do we have? And I did get questions on Instagram as well, so I do want to get to those. Um, I think we have like two more like solid ones. Okay. Um, I have this one. I think Sarah linked. This is like a, a more natural like stain remover, but it has the like brush head um that kind of gets in the grain of the fabric i use this on my like bath soak of like 15 pieces a couple days ago every single stain in there and i had everything from like escada soap to 1970s poly came out and i was a little awesome. like shook over it and i it was just hand washed i did do a some batch in oxyclean after but that one is really great and then this is like my spray remover um, and that one is also linked too, but I mean, anything that's a little bit more gentle, again, like you don't want to start with bleach right off. You kind of want to start and go and gentle detergent and dish soap. If I do wash things just because some, a lot of people are sensitive to things, um, is also like a good thing for me. If I'm not using laundry detergent, I'll use like a really gentle dish soap. Um, and this is usually what I pick over. Um, detergent for silks. I know there is a silk wash, but that's usually like what's laying around in my Like home. in your washing machine? No, no. This is oh, like, like a hand wash. Okay. I was like, oh, I'm, the, I'm, I'm imagining I'm like Freaky like, Friday yeah. where like all the bubbles are like coming out. No, this is like in my sink, like when I do like my hand washing batch or if I do like a huge batch in my tub. Um, so that's what I incorporate there. And I mean, obviously in silks, like you try to want to avoid 
using any washing machine that is like a hand washing technique, which I can share my favorite tips for that later on too. I, I, we're going to have more than enough. Thanks. <laughs> we are on question number two. <laughs> not at like 20. So we're not going to get to it all today. Maybe we'll have to come back on. What else is left on uh, your toolbox, Monica? So I guess this is, I think this is pretty gentle too, but this is the grandma's. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty that. In a oh, minute. Yeah. There you go. So this is the grandma's and I've had really good luck with this on uh, just about and every stain that I've had recently i've had really good luck with this like in the past probably six months since i changed over from i i think i ran out of an oxyclean uh spray because i do have like the the powder oxyclean but mm -hmm. i had switched to this and i had heard a lot of people talking about it and i do really like this one however another one that i want to talk about because I found this once I had it, I had an issue with a mothball scent and I was Googling around trying to figure out how to get the mothball scent out of some sweaters and this detergent saved me. So this, I know it's, you know, maybe not everyone's favorite, but it is a OxyClean odor buster something, but I'll have it linked in my store. I know it's hard to see, but I seriously, was shocked at how well this got out the mothball stink because that's pretty strong and honestly like the worst smell in my opinion but that with uh this worked really really well so mothball smell yeah that's right. a great tip i had um something i can't remember what it smelled like but it had a funky smell and i read to put it in the freezer Mm. And I put it in the freezer for, it was smoke. It was a gorgeous, it was like a leather jacket or something. Um, and I mm -hmm. think it was like high end and I was like, I'm not. And so I put it in the freezer for like a week and it was gone. It was like, nice. Gorgeous. And that was like awesome. no risk, right? Except for like, yeah. it was in my freezer, but. Um, yeah. so I want to ask because Ashley said all her hand wash stuff goes in the machine on a delicate cycle. And I am very tempted to do this with all, a lot of my stuff too. How risky is that? It depends on the grade of silk. Um, if we're going to get super technical, like we could go from mulberry to fine like silk. But I mean, generally, it's OK. I think like you kind of have to prepare yourself. Like don't put a $200 blouse. Like it's probably worth spending the time to hand wash that. But if you have some pretty like low grade silk, I mean, ch made in China is usually a good spectrum for that. Um, if it's uh, a little bit newer in the last like 15 years, I say delicate cycle is OK um do not put it in the dryer please um but other okay. than that it's okay yeah i mean and when you're hanging things so if when you're not putting them in the dryer um that's great you're doing a great job and then if you hang it that's that's good but if it's a blouse if it has some issues i generally suggest laying it flat to dry um if you can do it outside great um, but just put it on a towel, put it in your bathroom floor, lay flat because it's going to, the weight isn't going to distribute in the garment evenly. So that's why you might have a seriously cold shoulder or scoliosis happening. Well, not even yeah. like those clothing racks that you hang it on, like completely flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Liz, say, you, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Liz is saying she uses cheap vodka in a spray bottle for smells and purses on clothing. Mm -hmm. um, so like one spray and then a shot or... <laughs> Vodka is really great. Vinegar is really great. I have this one that's uh, an Aran fabric, and this is like a vinegar base here. Uh, mm -hmm. But even if it's an item that you can't spray or mist, um, if you put it in a bathroom with a bowl of warm like vinegar water, I had some scarves. I worked for a scarf company in the past, and we had a lot of stuff coming in from India, and the the mothball smell was kind of very but it was dry clean only fabric so it would cost us thousands of dollars to dry clean it but if it's in a small mm -hmm. space with a little warm water and a little bit of um vinegar in there or vodka um and that'll hopefully knock out that as well oh that's smart because i have used vodka in or not vodka <laughs> vinegar in my washing machine mm -hmm. but for things that you can't wash um that makes sense all right monica you're up what else do you have in your toolkit um I think we've covered most of it. I mean, okay. oh, you know what? There is one more. Um, micellar water. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Again, sorry for the glare on this. This is great. It? it is like the makeup remover, and it's the oil-free makeup remover. Um, oh, right. 
And so I, again, I use these little like cotton pads. So these are great. This is really, really great on like blouses where maybe it's someone tried it on and they got makeup on it. So maybe it's on like the inner collar or usually, usually you find makeup like around the collar line, right? So I use this if it's just like a little bit of makeup and it'll take the makeup right off. And on usually, any fabric? yeah, oh, it's really great. Danger, Cause that, that. Yeah. 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 So this is like really, really great. I've used, oh, sorry. Okay. I've, I've used this on a number of items. I think maybe on only like two items. Have I ever had it leave kind of a um, watermark? And at that point, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just wash the item. But most of the time, it doesn't leave any watermarks. It's, it is very similar to the Tide stick, in my opinion, as in they, it usually doesn't leave any marks. But, you know, you still, you still run the risk. I don't think I would use this on, um, I probably wouldn't use this on most like really lightweight silks. Like if it was like a blue silk, I don't think I would use it on it because it probably would leave a little bit of a watermark and then you'd have to hand wash it probably. So, but it would come out. You yeah. just have to hand wash it. Yeah. So you're not like completely like this garment is out. Um, so someone's asking if you dilute the vodka. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll put yeah. straight vodka on. Yeah. I mean, the only put, place you put straight vodka is like in your mouth, but <laughs> just else. You so this is yeah. like half vodka, half water. Yeah. That is so, so cute. Yeah. That's adorable. Yeah, that's really <laughs> cute. Um, so I'm going to say one thing that I have, and I'm going to get your guys' take on them because someone told me to buy them and I've actually never used them, um, are these wool light at home dry cleaners. Oh. Have you guys heard of them or tried them? I bought them. I mm -hmm. saw that Liz, she commented what that dry yell kit was too. And I'm definitely gonna have to order that. I know a lot of people in the chat were saying that they used it too, but yeah. I think that's the two things that I need on my list. So tell us about this wool light, please educate us. Oh, I don't know. I just bought it. Oh. <laughs> so I will <laughs> show you together. One. There we go. Um, yeah, I've never used one. I've never used that. Like. It says, I, I mean, it's spot clean, but I like because it said dry clean. So it gets like all the things that you would like be risky business to go to the dry cleaner. But I think you guys are probably seasoned enough that you know other tricks that because these but these were pricey, which is why I've never used them also because okay. I'm so <laughs> and it's like they're individually packaged. So once you take it out, like you have to use it. Um, mm -hmm. But I had heard a lot about them and someone told me and I bought them and then I have yet to use them because I'm too scared. Um, and then the other thing that you guys didn't mention that I use is on leather shoes and you mentioned it, Monica, yeah. but on the bottom of leather soles to get it off. Where's the camera? Yeah. And yeah. Oh, there you go. You had it. You had it earlier, so I was waiting. Low grade, low grade sandpaper for um, people. You don't want to go with the 10 grit right off. But yeah, also, because no, Melissa was saying I'm new to reselling, can you tell? It, and this is like the thing, you will always learn something new. The power of Google and especially mm -hmm. Pinterest for these things, you can type any question. Like my best advice is like Google before you go. I mean, you don't mm -hmm. want to jump into anything if I'm not 100% confident. I use those resources regularly and I know that along with these ladies, I'm happy to answer any questions. Go ahead and slide in my DMs. I love answering and being able to help people. So if I can link you with a resource, I'm definitely going to try to. Yes. Um, and I agree, which is why I don't do anything. <laughs> yes. I'm always like, I don't know. Three out of the four Google things say to do this, but then there's this one and I don't want to ruin it. Now I've wasted my time. Okay. I do want to touch because you guys both um, are vintage sellers. Um, do you handle vintage differently? Because I'm always very scared to do vintage, especially because depending how far back you go, you don't know what it's made of. There's no care instructions. Mm -hmm. um, so give us some tips on vintage. I I don't want to say too much because I, in my opinion, like what I do, if I'm in doubt, I steam it if I think I can steam it, which, you know, I sell a lot of denim, as far as vintage goes, I sell a lot of denim, a lot of sweaters, uh, a lot of like 80s, 90s stuff. So I don't have as much knowledge as Carrie does uh, in older items. But if I'm doubtful, you know, I'll steam it or, you know, I don't put it in the wash if I'm very doubtful. But Carrie, you probably have more to share. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the decade. If you're having trouble dating a garment, that's your first step. But generally from the 70s and earlier, everything is good to machine wash. Even like low grade silks are okay. Um, when you get- 70s from, and earlier? 70s and later. So 70s Oh, and later. I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Well, please yeah. don't wash any Victorian pieces. Yeah, um, well, that's why I heard it wrong. And I was like, wait a minute. Okay. Sorry, I may have said that wrong. And then I probably heard it wrong. 70s and earlier, um, generally from the 50s to that point is okay. From the 40s, um, you start getting into metal zippers and different closures that also react differently to different detergents. They react with different chemicals that were treated in the garment. A lot of times they're stored in plastic dry cleaning bags, which people think is a great idea, but the plastic starts to disintegrate on the item and there's certain chemicals that interact with. I've watched a 1940s dress and it looked like a bomb went off in it. It just yeah. flew out whatever happened in the washer. And fortunately there wasn't that much in there, but there's oh, something that had that chemical reaction that fortunately and unfortunately I'm not a chemist, I can't figure out. Um, but yeah, from the forties and earlier, I don't wash them. Um, I steam everything. I can, I, if you're a historical <laughs> restorer, don't <laughs> quote me here, but I even steam things from the 1700s and earlier. Um, those things, they are okay with steam. They have lasted this long already. If that's going to break them, I probably shouldn't be trusted. But um, yeah, when in doubt, steam is the most gentle. Um, so I would just steam it, just steam it enough that it needs to be photographed. If there's a stain listed as is, if it's shattering listed as is, if it has a mark listed as is, because um, a lot of those things, like when you start to get into that antique era, there can be certain animal pieces that were used in the garment. Um, a lot of times, like in corsets, there were whale bones before there was metal. So there's all sorts of things that can interact with um, chemicals and stuff that we're using to clean today that can damage the value of the garment. Um, so I say 40s and earlier, leave it as is, steam it if you need to, and then older, you're generally okay. I would just say with silks, um, you're a little bit more careful, but polys, polys you can throw in the wash all day. Um, and generally, if it has a little bit of give, it's going to be a synthetic material. So that is uh, always a good go ahead for an OxyClean candidate or a little bit more detergent. That's a smart tip. Um, and that's why a lot of newer modern clothes you can do because most of them have give. Yeah. And why I'm like a ridiculous large size in vintage because it doesn't stretch. <laughs> well, and Sarah said it made a good point. Cold water. That's a really great point, Sarah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do warm water. You don't want to do hot water, especially with soaking items. Even like my newer pieces, I generally don't put hot water in anything because it does mess with the um, way that the garment is made and the different uh, wefts in that too can kind of mess with it and cause some any areas of stretching and um, distortion there too. So cold water is always like the way to go. All right, I we are getting to an hour and I have more time and more questions, but I want to be aware of your guys' time. Are you okay if we go over a couple of minutes? And because I did have a couple yeah. other questions and then we did I had questions from Instagram as well that I wanted to bring up. But I do want to be cognizant of your time. Um so yeah. if we you need to go, yeah. just let me know. Nope. Um, <laughs> and Liz said too, and I was gonna mention that too. If someone is buying an item 40s or older, they know how to handle it or repair, and mm -hmm. they also know, and I find vintage even like 90s and 80s like they know that it's old um mm -hmm. and you i don't do a lot of cleaning in general i list if you are going to not do it list it in your listing and say this has the same here that you know whatever mm -hmm. you do is close it but most people are fine with that they either know how to handle it or they know that it's yeah. vintage and they're fine with that um okay so we talked a little bit about vintage shoes do you we talked about getting stuff off of the bottom of shoes and leather mm -hmm. and suede how do you handle tennis shoes? Someone mentioned putting it in uh, OxyClean and letting it soak. Do you guys have any other tips for tennis shoes? So personally, I'm not a big sneaker person. I, If you've watched any of my videos, I have talked about how I'm not a huge fan of sneakers. I just don't enjoy wearing them personally, so I don't know a lot about sneakers. However, when I have had sneakers, you know, I guess I've used oh, yeah. the Magic Erasers on parts of the sneaker that I can. You can't use them obviously on on maybe every part of a sneaker, but these have been my a lifesaver when I've 
listed any, I guess, uh, especially on, I think I had a pair of Nikes, like they were a white Nike of some sort. And these took off some really nice scuffs on even just the top of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would say Magic Eraser, um, if it's a canvas, obviously you can use a little bit of OxyClean. I would suggest that Tide Pen, you can graduate to an Oxy Pen. If it's white, I should say OxyClean and not just say Oxy. Um, if you should use- um, oh, yes, right. Wrong <laughs> channel. We're not talking about it. Oh, really? Oxy, Oxy, what's happening <laughs> over here? <laughs> um, and then I, um, there's a Clorox pen that you can use too that's a little bit more harsh on that. Um, and you can soak those. If there's a rubber sole, go ahead and soak them. You're just going to have to wait a while for them to dry out. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting them in the dryer. I did that with my all birds the other day. I was like, oh, just toss them in. Those wool oh. things take forever. And it got stuck in the back of the dryer. Oh. Um, and it, it physically like wedged itself and burned it. It's probably an extreme experience because I have put them in there before. <laughs> but that's just kind of like if you can afford to give the time to let them air dry, I would go with that. You can always take the insoles out. That's going to help that too mm -hmm. um, dry a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Um, I have used, I don't do it often, but y'all know, like, but I have used a toothpaste. I used to be like a sneaker head in high school. Um, and so I would use toothpaste or not to a toothbrush, not toothpaste, a toothbrush. Yeah, um, and a just, new one. <laughs> yeah, I know. And just scrub it with, um, either like Dawn, like a little bit of Dawn and some water and scrub it, especially like on the bottom of shoes mm -hmm. that really helps keep the bottoms. And it's pretty, it's pretty easy. I'm pretty like low key and easy. Mm -hmm. Um, Someone said, oh, Miss Market said, this is, do you guys know Miss Market? I cannot, yeah. be, what is her We're first all name? great friends. Michelle. Thank you. It was just driving me crazy. She was on my show. I know her, but you know how like it's like on the tip of your tongue. Hello, mm -hmm. Michelle. I apologize for not remembering your first name. Michelle says, I use Magic Eraser and the Sharpie White Oil Paint Pen for smaller details, yellowing, yellowing on sneakers. The Sharpie White Paint white oil paint sounds amazing that's smart i also will use occasionally like the black sharpie especially and some garments like that are woven like they're woven with a print they're not printed after the fact of being like woven yeah. um, but they might have like a pull in them i know i had like an end on end other stories dress and it had like this beautiful smoke print but because it was pulled there was like an area of white so i i just gently went in Make sure you have something under it when you're doing it but that's generally like a little bit goes a long way but there's some some little hacks again if you're not compromising the piece and it's not like chanel that you're putting a sharpie to um it's definitely a great way to use that too i love that yeah that's smart i haven't seen that heard of that before i'll have to get one um to put in my toolkit and never use because i'm scared um <laughs> lunar chick says i mix water baking soda and laundry detergent and use an extra toothbrush to apply and clean the sneakers on that note i have and i have done this one um cleaning birkenstocks with baking soda because sometimes like the footbed gets it's so gross i did it once and i was like oh this is disgusting <laughs> Um, but you get all, it came out, I mean, it came out really good, but if you get baking soda and water and make like a paste and clean the inside of the barks, it gets all that like nasty. Yeah. I know Lauren at Southern Stone, she is a great resource for shoe cleaning. I mm -hmm. always learn something new from her, but she has like a whole stem of highlights for all sorts of hacks with that. But oh, what is, will you type her name in the comments so people can? So I guess I don't have a stream Sierra account and that's how I went knocked out in the beginning. Cause I was like low key trying to get an account. Um, oh, oh. Um, I will share it on my stories after I'll tag her on my stories. Okay, um, cool. um, tag me and then I'll share it to my, yeah, story. Yeah, well, I want to know who she is too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we're good on all those questions. So I think those are all the questions that I had for you. I'm gonna get to some people on um, Instagram did send me specific questions that I want to make sure. Yeah, I love I'm my room the live stream and I have a bunch of notifications. I hope they're all sales. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably not. They're probably like all returns from eBay because that's. So oh, Liz linked her below. Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank, Thank you, Liz. Liz. Um, the questions, let me find them. Do, 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 where were they? Okay. Oh. How to clean canvas shoes. Can't wash them because they also have leather. So I think we kind of touched mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Right? If there's any I other. Think so. I think another good hack is, um, saline solution. That's especially good if you have blood on a garment and you're not an extreme amount of blood 
Um, but just like, especially like in my sewing fashion school days, when you started sticking yourself and you got a drop on there, you just put mm -hmm. a little bit of saline and like contact solution that'll come off. Oh. Um, oh. Wow. Was, you know, these like foam things that are always on your dry cleaning hangers. They're like the stretchy thing. Yeah. 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 So I have them all put up here. These are really great for some surface stains. I wet it a little bit. This is really great for deodorant. Um, this is another thing. If you want to try that on the leather, if you don't want to invest in a magic eraser, this is a great cheap okay. to start with it. Your grandparents probably have one laying around. Um, so that's a good one too. Yeah. Um, you are, thank you so much, both of you, for coming on. You random, are, it's just random tidbits in here. That's all. Yeah. I mean. Well, and that's after, you know, doing this for so long, you get there. Um, oh, Michelle from Mishmarket says, what's the go-to for set in stains on delicate pieces? Um, so, I mean, I think we kind of went over, like, what our go-tos for that. Um, there are a lot of pieces that have come my way that are really, like, too far gone, whether it's, like, pit city in pit stains or just really bad, like, somebody really went into the buffet, but it's, like, beautiful, like, Escada. Um, so I actually am doing an upcoming collaboration with a surface print designer and I have a lot of pieces that were really stained um, or might have an issue and she is actually like custom dyeing them. I'm actually wearing her shirt right now. <laughs> so oh, she dyed that? Yeah, yeah. So it's so awesome. that she um, dyed. But um, oh, that's anyway, cool. I think I'll, I'll try to get her on my YouTube channel and we'll do like a tutorial. So if you can, if you want to put that extra effort into dyeing something and giving it like a second life, um, if that's stained. But I mean, obviously dye adheres really well to natural fibers. So anything that's like a mm -hmm. wool or silk, um, but even some polys work really well too. So I'm going to be I think we're going to be launching that little capsule collection in May. So that's awesome. a great way if you can have some extra time. If not, I'll buy it off of you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that, I love that. And then I also, um, later in the game, but I used to be really into embroidery. Um, oh, but Tori, do you follow Girly Girl Styles? She's doing a ton of embroidery right now. Oh, no, I need to. Yeah, go I follow her. She's selling a bunch of her stuff. It's cool. Okay, I got to check it out. Yeah, yeah, I love following all these amazing embroidery accounts. So, I mean, it's... I'm not like an extreme artist by any means, but this is just like one of them that I'm starting. But this is like a 1950s like printed shirtwaist dress, but it had a couple of like pretty extreme moth holes. So I'm kind of going over that. But That's such a good idea. The one behind me too is like a poly 70s, but this one has um, some holes in it as well, but it's a gorgeous print. It's a really forgiving fabric. So that I'm going in a little bit more with uh, complimentary embroidery on that too. So if you have the extra time and like for me, that's like, at the end of the day, when I'm sitting in front of the TV and like trying to be 90 years old, I'll be doing that while I'm sipping my wine. And it's a great way to like pass the time. It keeps your mind engaged and hopefully it makes me have some little extra money on a piece that I was going to throw away. Um, yeah, and gives it new re it gives it new life, especially yeah. you know, these high end pieces or vintage. Um, Liz Garrison mm -hmm. says basic set of six fabric markers from tulip that sells at walmart for 9.99 is a must investment for any reseller use it on leather shoes and purses i love that yeah mm -hmm. do some um, on it too. yeah so i think this was mentioned but ink and marks on purses you guys would use oxyclean or no 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 i take that back the um Magic eraser. Yeah, thank you i'm glad you know what that meant monica yeah <laughs> okay I'm trying to follow, I, yes yeah for, I mean, you can try it and see, because that's that's one of my big ones. I sell a lot of purses, and I usually just am sad and disclose that they have marks on them because yeah. I'm all especially for like leather. I don't know how to. You can at least make it a little bit lighter, you know. And mm -hmm. I again like would do like if it's leather, leather cleaner, conditioner, circular motion, or go with the grain of leather. Mm -hmm. Again, if it's suede, we can do what we talked about with the suede brush. Um, if it's a canvas, you can do the spot treatment that. Um, Monica mentioned, but it really depends on each piece is completely different. I mean, yeah. if you're dealing with a Dooney and Burke purse or you're dealing with like some cool like 70s piece that might not be worth like more than $30, $40 to sell. Um, yeah. Kind of depends. Um, I think you guys actually answered all of these questions, so we might not go that far over. Um, permanent marker off rubber shoe soles. That's what we started with. How do you mm -hmm. clean suede shoes without ruining them? And the Uggs thing is the biggest thing. Um, mm -hmm. Can you clean a wool sweater in the washing machine on the wool setting? 
Um, I tend to be weary. Like, it depends on your washing machine. Like, if it's brand new and it's wool setting, like, I mean, go ahead and throw that thing in there. Like, my washing machine's like, solid from the 90s. I don't really necessarily trust that wool setting. Um, but I would say it's fine. I would just keep it cold water. If it's, it's mm -hmm. all the wool setting, it generally will be. Um, with my sweaters, I generally either dry clean them or I hand wash them myself. Um, but again, if it's a time issue, you can do the gentle cycle, you can do mm -hmm. the whole setting, um, but no time in the dryer. Yes, I was saying yeah. do not do that. It will be a toddler <laughs> size, but yeah. it's a little pocket by the time you get out. But yeah. You will have a new dog sweater, a little yeah. dog, like a little chihuahua. I need all the chihuahuas now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had really good luck with vintage wool sweaters or wool blend sweaters on delicate cycle with wool light. And if they have a smell, uh, vinegar. Um, I've had good luck with that. And then I don't have like a drying rack. So like I think Carrie mentioned before, like laying it flat. I think that's really big with wool as well. Um, and, and most sweaters anyway, because you're going to get weird hang, you get weird hanging. It's like SS. Scoliosis. Yeah. Always so laying, bumpy. laying all of it flat to dry. Oh, oh. I know I keep, Popping well, out and popping back up. in. Another alternative, if you don't have the space to lay it flat dry, you can either use the padded hangers and wrap them with a towel or just a regular hanger and wrap it with okay. a towel. You can use rubber bands and that way it'll oh, give it more idea. of a warm shoulder and kind of help evenly distribute that weight a little bit more too. Oh, that's I smart. love that. Yeah, that is smart. Um, I have used, going back to this weight question, um, that and grateful queen is on. Hey girl, thanks for coming by. I know you popped on and you had work before this. Thanks for joining. Um, the suede spray I've actually used on uh, Uggs before, like the black ones that are really worn. And it's, I mean, it's amazing. You can get like, I think it was like $7 and I can use it on three or four pairs of shoes and it's easy. It smells. I did it in my basement the first time. Not a good idea. Definitely do it outside. But that was a quick and easy and gave it new life um, after I kind of roughed it up. A not roughed it up. That's a terrible word to say for that. Yeah. It very gently with uh, the comb. Um, so if Carrie has a few minutes as well, I know Monica had a couple specific questions if you wanted to ask those and then that'll give people some time too if they had any other specific questions for you ladies. So I think the one big one that I know that Carrie, because we're friends, I know that she has a lot of jewelry knowledge. And as I'm, you know, as we're in this weird kind of time, I'm kind of looking around my house and going, what can I like list that I've been putting off? And one of those things is jewelry. Um, but some of it's kind of like tarnished and discolored and kind of weird. Uh, what would you recommend for those of us like at home that are maybe going through our like random jewelry collection and have pieces that are, you know, maybe they're they're just costume jewelry that's older and has some tarnish and some discoloration. Like, what would you recommend doing with something like that? Oh, good question. All right. So, um, it depends, obviously. If it's a newer costume piece, generally it's gonna have a brass or steel base. Um, and it's only plated a couple of times. With costume jewelry, it's plated a lot more heavily. It's almost with the construction of fine jewelry in that era from the 60s and earlier. So generally you can be a little bit tougher on cleaning those pieces with patina. Um, for true costume, I would say, um, I just use a light cleaning cloth, unfortunately, if there's not much, especially with that one that looks pretty articulated. It's not going to be super easy to get in there. Those pieces I just take right to my jeweler and he dips them for me. Okay. Um, and you can select, they can be 10 karat through 18. It's really not, it shouldn't be super expensive. Check with them before they do it for you. But usually mm -hmm. it's in like the 10 to $30 range. Um, I had mentioned earlier, like I have like my Gucci belt just from like being up on the counter all day, I'll be scratching it and making color, but he'll dip that for me every couple of months. And that gives it a new refreshed um, look. And then if it's a silver, if it's sterling silver and it's not gold plated, so that will be stamped on there either 925 or sterling. Um, those are really great with the silver cloth. You can go in again. It's like the same thing with romancing. If it's not coming up, you can use toothpaste. 
if you really want to get into it, there's silver polish. So there's definitely ways. And I know Sarah, she has a lot of experience in here yeah. too, cleaning silver. Um, Dawn soap's good. Um, and I would just say, like, I wouldn't go crazy on it. Um, you can always use circular motions. And if it's gold plated on silver, I wouldn't advise doing those cleaning methods either with the silver polish because it'll take that electroplated off. Um, okay. so, and just a gentle silver cloth, you can order them on Amazon um, and they're super affordable. Um, and again, if you want to go a little bit further, your local jeweler um, will be able, should be able to dip it for you. If not, you can reach out, my jeweler will ship it to you. So um, oh, that's awesome. resource too. Yeah, that was a great question. And I am like in awe of all of your knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So this much is why I wanted Carrie on here because like, yeah, I, Sarah, I'm like you where I kind of want to do the bare minimum. Like there's certain things like leather. I love like there's certain things that I have come to know. But when it comes down to it, like Carrie's my go to girl. And I'm like, what do I do with this? And what do I do with that? And then like she said too, like learning learning as you go and having, making those mistakes and kind of just. Which Monica and I did have a very bad mistake in collaboration. I don't know if she wants to share this. One. Um, so I, <laughs> this is an open wound. It's still so it, soon. It still hurts a little <laughs> bit. But, and it mostly, I mean, it, it was completely my fault because what happened is I was, okay, let's back up a second. Um, in hindsight, I knew what I should have done and I completely forgot about this trick, which I will share, but I had some stinky vintage silk scarves. Like they smelled so bad. It took my breath away and I do have a touch of asthma. So it, they stunk so bad that I was having trouble breathing. Like oh, that's how they bad were Emilio Pucci scarves, which you. if anyone is like a designer, like ho, like I, they're like the best. He's like the best designer yeah. of any kinds of prints. Like he's like, if yeah. like, people are like, oh, Lily Pollitz are like, he's like, yeah, in it to win it. Like most yeah. beautiful silk patterns. There's so many other designers that studied under him, whether it's Alfredo Bessi, um, and I think even Saint Laurent studied under him. But correct me if I'm wrong. But there know. are so many incredible designers. <laughs> I'm not correcting you on any of this. <laughs> <laughs> but but okay. okay, okay, so okay. Go back. The thing. Okay. They smelled so bad that I wasn't even comfortable trying to sell them. Like, yeah, yeah. the haven't... smell was so strong. I mean, they were gorgeous. I was happy to learn about the, the designer. I didn't pay much for them. I found them at the bins. But the smell was just something that you just didn't ever want in your house, let alone you wouldn't want to sell it to someone. So anyway, I... I was like messaging Carrie because I'm like panicking. Like, what do I do with these things? Can I soak them? How do I get the smell out? And... I ended up soaking them in cold water with some, some dish soap, um, you know, just to try to get the smell out. However, I made a very big mistake and I don't know what I was thinking or how I forgot about them, but I let Blame them know the trauma of the coronavirus. That's all you yeah. have to yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's yes. Yeah. I let them <laughs> soak overnight and I think obviously it was just too long. And so the colors did end up bleeding a little bit. And one of them, it bled a lot because the colors were so dark and bright and, you know, there's white and black. And so that turned out terribly. One is like salvageable, but I also really like it. So I'm like, do I keep reseller it? Life. Yes. Reseller problems. <laughs> Yeah. And so even my husband's like, well, that kind of looks cool. Like he probably, he wouldn't have known, but you know, a collector would know right away. So I, you know, the colors bled. However, so here's what I should have done. You know, Carrie mentioned like I could have steamed them, but honestly, the smell was so strong. I, I don't think steam would have helped at all. I could have tried, you know, spraying it or spritzing it with the vinegar water, uh, but what you, like, keep it for yourself to wipe away your tears. Yeah. Oh. What I should have done is oh, this. What is that? So I've done this and I have a video. It's a very old video and it's a very bad video, but I have a video on using activated charcoal or carbon. This is what you'd put in like a fish tank, I believe. But 
you put it in like a little container because this is messy. So you want to have it in a separate container, pour it in a separate little like plastic container, leave it open. And then whatever smells like really stinky, like in this case would have been the scarves. I would have sealed everything in a bin of some sort, a, an empty bin of some sort with uh, the open container of this charcoal and the charcoal will pull that smell out. And I did this with some smoky leather pieces and it worked really, really well on the smoky leather pieces. Why I didn't think to use it or do it with the scarves, I don't know. <laughs> But I think the pieces just smelled so bad that I wanted like the quickest fix. And this does take a while. I had to let um, the smoky pieces sit for a couple, I think two plus weeks to get the smell out. And I think I just wanted a quick fix. And honestly, that was bad. That was a bad idea. So yeah, but less yeah. learned, good tip. And now you'll remember mm -hmm. next time. It'll be like yes. ingrained in your head, right? Yeah. Um, let's check in with the chat. If anyone has any other questions, Grateful Queen says, she definitely has lots of jewelry in her money pile. And I think a lot of people do. So that was a great question. Oh, Amber Resells is joining us. She wants a go-to girl for tips. Carrie is it. Like, yeah. <laughs> she ask is. The questions. She, I mean, she knows that she's going to be my go-to girl. And her information is down below, below for anybody who has questions. Um, Oh, they're reminding everyone to hit the thumbs up. Yes, I definitely yeah. appreciate it if you like this kind of content. Um, Monica, was there one other thing that you had? We are going over. So if you guys do have to go, um, I'm enjoying the content. So I don't mind so much. Um, and having, you know, conversation with people other than my children, I don't mind. Um, yeah. So if you have more questions, I'm here for the ride if you guys want yeah. to. So we kind of already answered it, but I, I'm all about loving examples, like real life examples. And uh, so out of frame, but you know, this is a, this is not silk, but it's a vintage Christian Dior piece and it is very badly stained and it's probably not going to pick up on screen, but there's like all this weird discoloration all over it. It's very light, but it's, you know, it's there. And so it's not a silk piece, but I guess, Carrie, I just wanted to see from you and your exp expertise, what would be your method for this piece? I'm guessing that it would be best to soak it in, you know, hand wash it or. Yeah, I think 80s era, era um, lingerie, it looks like it's a poly base and even the lace it is. is poly. Um, so yeah. Yeah, OxyClean should be fine for that. I would soak cold water. Um, it's not going to bleed with anything because it's super light. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that one would be fine for OxyClean. Okay. That was what I was going to do. But I was like, I have a big pile right now that I, I need to clean. And I was like, well, I'll just use this as an example, as a real life example of something yeah, that needs to be worked on. Um, so that was it. Yeah, I think. Oh, so for the hand washing, I'll just go over that real fast. So we have a couple minutes. Um, so cold water, you can do it in a sink or a tub. Um, you can use OxyClean or I use like a light detergent or dish soap. Um, when you're washing the items, again, like colors, I know that Mish Market and Michelle mentioned in the mm -hmm. chat, she did like red overalls and that will bleed. Um, so I usually kind of keep an eye on the first couple minutes. If I notice mm -hmm. that something's starting to crowd with the others not well, you got to rip it out real fast. But um, yeah, light colors. And then I generally, it's like a swishing motion. You're not like a washing machine. You're not turning mm -hmm. the butter. So just kind of like lightly get that coated. Um, I generally leave it for 15 to 20 minutes unless it's like severely stained. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it's done, you can just I wasn't laughing at you. I don't know if you just saw her comment, but I yeah, I just saw her comment. <laughs> that should be like our. I'm doing like happy hours. I'm gonna have you on for a happy hour. We'll drink and we'll play like a drinking game. I'm honestly we... like I'm ready for this panel. <laughs> We're gonna do it. It'll be like yeah, a weekly wine night for like weekly wine night for um cleaning. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. Throw me your your fabric content. I'm ready, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> all but, of my stuff. We're moving, so all of my stuff is packed right now. I have nothing. I'm like the worst reseller right now. I have nothing. Yeah, like like antique, um, antique appraisals. We'll do cleaning appraisals. What do yeah. we need to prescribe? Um. But then, so basically, the main tip was that you don't want to wring anything out. You kind of want to switch it to the side. Let the water drain out. Um. I know that my boss, Milena. Um. She has a really great 
um, video for antique blouses and antique lace, but generally keep it to the side, let the water drain out, um, and then don't wring it and then lay flat to dry. But generally that's great. Um, and then the first tip for anything else is fresh air. Like Sarah said, hang the item out. It'll help get the wrinkles out. Wait for a great day outside. I hang out my whole fence has like ridiculous clothing. My neighbors think I'm absolutely insane, but just let it get that fresh air and twist tie. I use little twist ties to kind of tie it down so it doesn't like sweep over the neighbor's yard too because I've had to chase some bathrobes in my <laughs> day. Um, but uh, yeah, just make sure it's secure, get some good uh, air through it. And generally that's okay, especially with furs and leathers. Um, just Google it. Don't put it in the wash. Um, if you can't find an answer on Google and Pinterest, ask Annika or myself. Um, but yeah, we'll be happy to help. Um, I did, as you were saying that, I did have one more question. Um, so if something bleeds, is it, I mean, is it done so? Or is there anything you can <laughs> I mean, so I did have an embroidered Mexican skirt that had like a white cotton base and it had beautiful like um, red and yellow embroidery all over it. And it's the, I'm gonna say it wrong, but the ox can embroidery. Um, but I started to throw it in my bath of doing all things and I had to perform a rescue mission to save everything else. <laughs> It was, it was, really, it was really bad. Like it, it got, it was like, like a high school tie dye job, like where you're just like, maybe it's yellow, it could possibly be green. And so I'm actually, that's in my pile to take to my uh, surface print friend, um, Regan, and she is going to try to work her magic on that. But generally, I mean, it's more, it's going to be, um, I would say take it out if it starts bleeding, cold water, rinse it with dish soap. It might take a couple times to get that out. You might be able to get it out with some, um, but generally if it's like a, a piece like that heavily embroidered, if I were to do it again, the belt was super stained on it. So I would just soak that half of it rather than right, throwing it all in. Um, so a lot of spot treatment too, if you're- Yeah, out. spot treatment is the way to go. Um, especially in that case. So, but again, we all make mistakes. It happens all the time. But you're as long as you're learning from it, that's okay. You know, you're learning mm -hmm. opportunities, not mistakes. Yes. Um, that's. I'm sure you have all of this knowledge because you have learned something and done something. I've all made. I made the mistakes. That's why I'm like. But I'm still here. I'm still making. Yeah, and it gets it's it great. Okay. So I would. I went to school to be a teacher and unless you do it yourself, like someone can tell you all the time and unless you do it yourself, you don't actually learn it. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what mistakes are. Um, but yeah. it's devastating when you do it on like high end designer things, <laughs> then you're just crying. Um, okay, so we did go over and I do really want to thank you guys for uh, going over with me and sharing all of your knowledge and to everyone in the chat as well. If you are in the chat, leave your information, your Instagram, your closet, your eBay, whatever it is, you know, tag, I, this is for the community, not just, I mean, I'm here for the community, for these women to put their description and their knowledge, but as well as people who are joining on the live. So leave all your information. This will be up in a recording as well. So people will be checking in with it. So definitely self-promote yourself. I am here. I'm all about that, especially right now when things are chaotic. If you're doing reseller inventory boxes, whatever it is, plug away in the chat. If you are watching this in a recording, feel free to do it in the comments down below as well. Plug away your channel. I give share love. If you want to share your closet down below, I will go through and share some items in your closet. Um, that's all that I had today. I didn't have anything. You guys, have, that's all they had today. That's all the questions that I have for them. And I am really thankful, Monica, thank you so much for mm -hmm. connecting me with Carrie um, and then also for doing this with me. I think we can learn and grow so much from each other. We're not all experts in all of the things. So I love doing these panels and learning and growing from each other. So I really do appreciate you guys coming on this channel. If you like content like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up on your way out. Leave comments down below if you have questions. I will make sure these women get notified. I'll make sure that they see them or their information is in the description so you can reach out to them. They're both on Instagram and very active on Instagram. That is how I found them as well. Um, and both on YouTube as well. So mm -hmm. find either one of them. Um, they're both very knowledgeable as you found in the video and also very responsive as well. So. 
thumbs up, comment, subscribe to my channel if you like content like this. I do try and do at least once one live a week. So if there is content that you would like to see, you have questions and I cannot personally answer them, or I think it would be something good for a panel, um, I will try and put a panel together. So let me know of topics that you guys want to see. If you're an expert in something, also send me a DM and I would love to have you on and chat all of the things. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have, I was gonna say Friday and I know that's <laughs> not right. It's always <laughs> Friday. Friday. I know what day it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think someone said Wednesday. We're gonna go with Wednesday. So have <laughs> a wonderful Wednesday and I hope you guys all are staying safe and sane in whatever capacity that is for you guys right now. Thank you guys so Thank much. You guys.